Hi, welcome to my run through of my showcase presents. These are from DC Comics. And I've got Sea Devils, Metamorpho, and many more to go through. I've got about 25 or 26. So I'm just going to go through them all and just generally show you what they look like. Now, these came out quite a while ago. Fair, something like 2007, 2008, all the way through to about 2016, I think they sort of run out. I really wish they'd continued because I think this is a great little series. So Showcase Presents, you've got the Sea Devils. That's obviously a, a cover from the issue. A really brilliant bit of Russ Heath work. And on the back, now sometimes that actually gives the details of the issues. Not always. Sometimes, of course, it was actually quite complicated because there were so many different issues and all over the place that probably it was very hard to actually do. But they often gave that. You could see the list of the library of other books that were available. Obviously, there were more than that. I don't know how many they went to. Probably about 60, 70, maybe 80. There is a Wikipedia where you can actually see the complete list, all the breakdowns of all the issues. So it's really quite a useful little guide. But I wish I'd continued. Because this one's Sea Devils. And you can see it says one there. I mean, there's every hope there would have been a volume two, volume three. But this is full of some great artwork. But, of course, lots of people often complain about these showcase ones, or Marvel Essentials, because Marvel had, of course, their own series. Now, the ones of the Marvel ones, I haven't gone for so many of these sort of ones, because I've got lots of the omnibuses, whereas a lot of these stories have yet to appear in omnibus editions. Maybe at some point, Sea Devils will appear, but at the moment, I haven't seen it, but I hope it does, because the artwork is superb. I think it'd be not really nice to see in the colour version, but the black and white's great, and I'm used to the black and white. Grew up in the UK, all the comics generally were black and white. So it was, it's not an issue. It's not an issue for me. And the artwork is super sharp. So you can see there, they always had a great little index, giving all the details of the writer, as well as the artist. And you see Russ Heath did lots and lots of them. And they are excellent. Really, truly brilliant artwork from Russ Heath. Love his work. And this one goes all the way up to, let's see... 1963 there, Sea Devils 13, I think that's probably the last issue. Oh no, there's even more, Sea Devils 16. So you've got another page there, 400. And they often were 500 pages, some went to about 600. They were really good. I imagine that over years, if they'd continued, probably would have ended up at 800, 900 pages, because they seemed to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger as they went on. They initially started about 490. So let's just go through this one. And I'm gonna go through the other ones as well. They often, well, they always included the cover, though maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe not every single one has the cover, but certainly, obviously in this one, they do. Showcase Presents, and that, of course, in the original Showcase comic. I would love to have seen a Showcase Presents Showcase. There is one, I've got that, which I will be showing you, but unfortunately that didn't continue either, and there's so many great little stories that should have been included in a Showcase set. Likewise, Brave and the Bold comes to mind. But there you've got black and white artwork there. Just the prize flippers. And I think this is probably one of my favourites. I really genuinely love the stories. And the artwork is just superb. Stories, great. And in many ways, I feel that this feels like the Fantastic Four. You've got, obviously, there, Sue Storm. Obviously not Sue Storm, but Judy in this. But you've got the characters. You've got the Thing-like character. You've got the Human Torch-like character. There is just a passing resemblance. That's just my opinion. Obviously, maybe... Many people will disagree, but I just, when I was reading this, I was thinking, you know what? This really does feel like the Fantastic Four. And actually, the story is like 1960. You can see the story October 1960, 1960. So they were actually slightly earlier. This is more so than Challenges of the Unknown, personally. I might be wrong on that. I'm certain people will disagree, say, no, no. I don't know if there's been ever anyone's put a comment about that. Possibly you have. But to me, when I'm reading through these, I think they're absolutely superb. Obviously, they're all under sea. But they have some great characters. And I'm not all the way through. And you've got a character that looks remarkably like a certain character. Not any resemblance at all. And you've got that. Lots and lots of great, great... I think this is just a brilliant collection. Again, I'd love to see an omnibus. Now, just put that over there. Now, not every one is... Oh, this one, Metamorpho. I mean, I've got a few that are war ones. I'm a meg, not a mega fan of war ones. So they're, they're okay, though. Still brilliant artwork all the way through. And you've got all the Metamorpho stories that you can see there. 
400. This was quite an early one. And it's also got Justice League of America one there. Metamorpho says no, and you even got a pin-up. That's one thing it didn't include. And I wish they'd included more bonus things. Also adverts. But they didn't. But again, the artwork, in most cases, was super, super sharp. Just absolutely as good as you could get. These are like basically artist editions. Obviously, if they'd been bigger, you can see they're not that big, but they could have been artist editions. They are definitely that sort of quality. I think it's just superb. You know, really, really sharp. You probably can't really see that in those, but I think they're great. And they're just great stories as well. The valley that time forgot. And now, I assume there probably was an advert at this point. Metamorpho, the element man. Unfortunately. Now, Ramona Fradden's artwork all the way through this. Absolutely brilliant. Just love it. You've got Jonah. Now, I haven't got the Jonah Hex one. Though I've got that in Omnibus Edition. That's the reason why I haven't got the... there. Nor have I got any of the Justice League of America. I did, and I had those as well. And the Superman ones. I might get the Superman ones again. Maybe. But, of course, they're actually bringing out an Omnibus collection. Silver Age one. Now, sometimes... When you actually look at the, the numbers, the Batman one, there was Batman 1 came out of the showcase. That started in 1964. The recent Silver Age omnibus actually started like 1956. I don't know why they didn't start the showcase ones all the way back to 1956, but they didn't. Army at War. Now, I bought this one in Forbidden Planet. I think this was that's probably the cheapest one I've ever bought. I, soon, I saw it. Four ninety nine. I will have that for four ninety nine. What a great collection! And weirdly, the stories were all the way back to nineteen fifty two. So you got there nineteen fifty two. Lots and lots and lots, and they're lots of stories. So you're not talking. Like, you can see you've got a lot of stories for your money there, all the way up to issue. Uh, sorry, page five hundred and seven. Again, you've got the covers. I don't know if the covers are included for all of them. I assume that's the case. Again, the artwork is absolutely super sharp. Great little stories, very dramatic, but these are like 1950s. And they did quite a lot of those, 1950s, 1960s, but not so much 1970s because of licensing and all the various and other sort of payments, of course, to artists and all those sorts of things. So they did a lot of these, obviously the contracts that were written, they could actually make them obviously affordable. Trouble is, sometimes a lot of them you think, oh, why didn't they include the ones in the 80s and 90s? They probably would have just been too expensive. And I doubt if they sold vast amounts of these. They probably sold well. And I wish I'd continued with them. I really would. I think this is, there was a missed opportunity. There was so still so many wonderful DC series from the 50s and 60s that have just never been reprinted. And I would love to see them in this black and white format. Why not? It doesn't have to be colour. Again, I mean, the artwork is just first rate. And the key thing, of course... Story. Story is always, to me, king. And washed out cadet. That's, um, that was a good story. Never flying is my life. I just got... There's always the usual twists and turns at the end of the story. Now, probably a load of books will suddenly fall on top of me. This one, I haven't read I haven't read all of them yet. There's a lot of stories, of course. And I've been like, picking them up. Lots of the ones I hadn't bought earlier. So this one is definitely case in point. Showcase presents Super Friends. Never watched the series either, so we're completely missed on the series. Actually, weirdly, the artwork is slightly rougher in this than the ones from the 50s, which is very strange. But still, Atom, you've got, obviously you've got the various characters, obviously, from Super Friends there. You've obviously got there, going Atom and Flash, and all the various characters here, Robin, of course. But they've gone all black and white all the way through. But still, great little stories. And you can see there, going on the back, oh, it's got the Sea Devils one. It's got, obviously, Young Love and Superman team-ups in that case. And you can see the details there. Oh, put that over there. This one is All-Star Comics. One I haven't got is the All-Star Squadron. Now, I would love to get that one, but unfortunately, a lot of these showcase ones, you're just right place, right time. You can find them at Comic Mart. Probably, that's where I'll probably pick it up. Be a fiver. And obviously not this case. I think this wasn't too much. But that sort of thing, sometimes you can look at them at about £150. Which is absolutely crazy. But because when they came out, they were only about £15 or £16. Now they're ridiculously expensive in some cases. Not all. Some you can still get reasonably cheap. But some you suddenly notice they're really, really marked up. Especially the ones near the end. 
Obviously, probably people weren't buying as many of them. Maybe Legion of Superheroes comes to mind. I think Volume 5, a lot of the stories probably that haven't been included in omnibus collections, maybe. And suddenly, they're very, very expensive. And, of course, things like Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle comes to mind because, of course, there's a film coming out for Blue Beetle. So that sort of thing, that pushes the price up straight away. Anything, the collections of those, see people are going to think, ooh, let's put the price up. And I'm not even certain how many of these sort of volumes, actually, and this one's obviously got some brilliant Wollywood artwork in as well, which, of course, is a great recommendation. I think Wollywood, and you can always tell Wollywood straight away, that pose, his pose, he always has that pose, that the way that the arms are, you can even see there, exactly the same pose. Power, yeah, just, okay, more great little, but it's a nice little collection. The original superheroes. I would have loved to have seen them bring out all the, Golden Age ones. They didn't do that. Why not? I suspect the trouble is they probably didn't have the, the material, the film, the sources. So I guess they didn't want to spend lots of money obviously restoring them, cleaning them up. Obviously, they had the old star comics, the ones that obviously in the DC archives. So I don't know why they didn't bring those out, but it would have been nice in black and white because, I mean, they could have bought three or four volumes, ten volume, whatever. A fair number of volumes, maybe five of all of those would have been great. The original All-Star all comics. I love those ones. I've got one or two of the uh, old archives, but unfortunately I haven't got... Now, this one's great. Shazam, again, another case in point. Brilliant, they brought out all the old Captain Marvels from the 40s and 50s. That would have been brilliant. But you got Shazam, because they, these are the ones that came out in the 1970s. Shazam, again, brilliant, brilliant artwork. Billy Batson there. And yeah, going slightly... Sometimes you get someone who look at the artwork and you think, well, why is it slightly rougher than... And quite often, not all, but it's quite often the covers that seem to be the roughest ones. I don't know why. The covers seem to be slightly different from the interior. Not always, but sometimes that seems to be the case. But you've got there Shazam. And, well, this one's issue 1 to 33. So you've got quite a lovely run of Shazam. Obviously, it didn't go with all the various stories later on, but you've got Captain Marvel there. Another Captain Marvel story, and so on. Shazam, Captain Marvel. Of course, they couldn't call it Captain Marvel, but still, great little stories there. Oh, and that pile there is definitely going to collapse. So I better now. This one's an odd one. Green Arrow. Now these ones are actually from again 1950s ones as well as 1960s. Yeah, they went into 1960s. You can see the list there, table of contents, and you can see 1958. Now, they did bring out a Green Arrow omnibus collection, which was a Golden Age one, very odd choice. But you had all these great stories. So you get obviously get this, and I think this one's reasonably easy to find. I might be wrong on that, but I think this one's easier. But the omnibus as well, reasonably affordable as well. And the artwork still, at this point, really looks, you can see the star there, really looks like that sort of Golden Age period. Really got that. But then it suddenly changes. And sometimes that happened. You get one one issue that seemed to be sort of very much like the old style, and then you get the sort of newer golden, not golden age, the silver age style. And you can see how it's changing there. Obviously, great artwork. And again, that's Jack Kirby works. So he's got some great art work there. Jack Kirby and Ross Kirby. Kurtz did obviously change over time. Lee Elias, Elias maybe. And you got Superboy and many others. But you got lots and lots of great. Green Arrow stories. But one trouble with this, of course, is, again, Green Arrow. It didn't include all the other stories because, of course, a lot of these ones were included, like Adventure Comics. You'd have, like, Superboy would be in the comics as well. You've got World Finest Comics. They obviously would have been Batman and Superman. It didn't include those. So all you've got is purely the Green Arrow. And that sometimes is a problem. Sometimes there's some collections I would love to have seen. Black Orchid comes to mind. I think the Enchantress, all those sort of ones that will never be collected in this sort of volume. Of course, never going to be collected at all now. But again, brilliant stories all the way through with the Green Arrow. And of course, there's Martian Manhunter, which I haven't got. Another one of those one-off ones. Again, this is a volume one. Always hoped there would be a volume two, but there wasn't. There were two volumes of Teen Titans. Teen Titans, most of the artwork was by Nick Cardi. There were others, Wally Wood and Neil Adams and others, but the stories initially started out in Brave and Bold issue 54, and you can see there, 1964, but they finally got their own issue in 1966, issue one of Teen Titans, 
And again, lots and lots of stories all the way through this. I'm going to say issue 18, but I think it might... Yes, that is the last issue there. Issue 18, 1968. Speedy turns up eventually. Also, of course, Hawk and Dove and Wonder Girl as well. And probably Beast Boy and a few others turn up as well. But initially, Kid Flash, Aqualad and Robin... Bit of a mouthful of a title. Teen Titans obviously works slightly better as a as a title, I think. And you can see Teen Titans there. And I assume that was, oh, that was issue three. They did feature some very weird sort of youth, sort of thing. <laughs> Sometimes they were pretty odd. But I still generally enjoyed the stories, even though occasionally I thought, hmm. Even at the time, I remember thinking, they're very odd, these stories. But they were good. Always very, very enjoyable. So that's volume one. And here's volume two. And again, this one goes all the way, I think, up to issue 36. Yeah, yes. And that's all the way into 1971. Again, Nick Cardi's still involved there. The computer that captured a town. You've got intruders of the foreign crypt and many, many other tales all the way through. And also some brilliant artwork there. I know it's Gil Kane there. You always sort of look at some of the art and you think, oh, that artist is not the same as Nick Cardi. And I'm probably wrong, but yes, Gil Kane. Whew, that was a bit of luck as I was looking at the front. Sometimes it depends on the inker sometimes. You can just about think, oh, that looks a bit like... And I'm not the best for telling the artist. Superman, this was the first one. This was the first one that came out. Well, saying that, Green Lantern as well. Green Lantern and Superman. I remember picking these up, two volumes. I thought, wow, over 500 pages, 9.99. I can't remember, it was... Must have been about £7 or something, £6.99 in the UK. Probably £9.99, knowing the way our pricing goes. But it was still, I thought, what great value. And especially it was in black and white. Now, I, I think, I'm certain, the essentials were out before the, obviously, the showcase ones. But I don't know if there were more showcases in the end than essentials. I'm not certain. I haven't got so many essentials, because mainly I've got them in omnibus or epics. But of course, DC have not brought out most of these in any form. So the showcase volumes are really the only way to go. But not only that, I think the artwork works best when it's in black and white. I still think that it's just really, really sh super sharp. These stories are for like 1958. See the first one there. Now, I don't know. Obviously, there were stories before that. It would be nice if they'd included the ones from 1954, 53. I don't know why they decided that that was the start of the Silver Age or whatever. Not even really keen on those names. Just doesn't make any sense because one person's one is 1956, one's 1954, depending on how you think about these things. But you've got here the super key of Fortress Superman. I guess they had to decide at some point to start the series. But it's just great. Now, there were also Superman family stories. They were the Lois and Jimmy Olsen stories. I probably won't get those ones. I did read them at the time. They were good. Absolutely fine. I'm, I'm not, but I'm, I don't think I'll be rushing to buy all those ones again. But this one, I thought, oh, I'll pick this one up. It's reasonably priced. So I thought, obviously, Supergirl and Superman there. And again, Lois Lane obviously turned up quite a lot of times. There's always the usual sort of trying to find out his identity or whatever, or she gets turned into Superwoman or whatever. There was lots of those sort of weird stories. But this was a great thing, and it was a great thing to finally get in the shops just to see it and then of course more volumes came out every month and I thought wow what a brilliant series picked up lots and lots of them now slowly but over time I didn't I don't know why you just sort of like I probably looked probably I started to get more omnibus editions and I just sort of didn't see the presents ones coming out so much but that's it but now I've actually gone back and looked through some of these and things like this again Atom why no omnibus edition yet. But again, the artwork I think is superb in black and white, absolutely fine. And this one's volume two. Yes, volume two. And the story's 1965. Of course, most are Gil Kane, Gardner Fox. And I genuinely enjoyed these stories. And when you look through these, that always goes all the way up to Atom. I think Hawkman as well. There were some stories there with Hawkman. I think that were the later ones. I might be wrong on that. I think that was the case. No, they're not. Oh, yes, Hawkman. I'm certain that Hawkman was in some of these stories. I haven't read them for quite a while, but I just they were just great. Absolutely great. Again, anything by Gil Kane is always going to be a winner for me. But also, not only that, when you look through these old Atom ones, they're so more... Compared with Ant-Man, Ant-Man could have been as good, if not better, than these. But there's just something was missing with the Ant-Man, well, they never, obviously, eventually they made him Giant-Man. Now, of course, they didn't do that with the Atom. They could have gone 
made him super massive, I suppose. I think that happened in the end, probably. But still, the atom. Oh, again, Gil, art by Gil Kane. I say anything, Gil Kane. Always my favourites. Just brilliant. But I loved the storyline. I loved all the things. And I loved the stories that later on, all the various uh, ones that continued on, like come on, Sword of Atom and those sort of ones. They were great yarns. Pity they just didn't continue to collect them all into this. But again, they probably would have been beyond that period. But you got the Atom there. Uh, the amazing arsenal of the Atom Assassin. Obviously, someone going for a bit of alliteration there. Definitely. But these ones stopped 1968. 1968, those ones. Now, the uh, oh, of course, typical, I haven't got the next issue, but I have got it somewhere. I will get to Atom number one at some point. The Great Disaster featuring the Atomic Knights, and these stories were 1950s ones, as far as I'm aware, and I'm just going to go there, and I might be completely wrong on that. No, they're not. <laughs> I think of something else. So, that is strange. I Ah, oh, yes, those ones were... Right, that's it. It's slightly odd the way they've done it. I knew they were, it was 1960s ones, but these ones were 1975. It starts with... <laughs> they didn't do it in order, but I, I guess there was a reason for this. Day After Doomsday, you've got the Weird War Tales, but you can see there, Tales of the Atomic Knights, and that's 1960, 1960, all the way through their strange adventures. The Gods Return, you've got Atlas, and also Hercules Unbound. So you've got a mix of stories here. Also, of course, lots of great Wallywood artwork here as well. And also, Commander even turns up in this. Commander, the last boy on Earth, 44, Commander 45, etc. Alternate ending. So there's a lot in this one. This is why one of the reasons I picked this one up, my featuring the Atomic Knights. That's why I thought, oh, I'm certain that was like nine, early 1960s. Now, when I looked, I thought, that doesn't look like 1960s artwork in any straight shape or form. But you can definitely tell when you look, get to that page. There's the ones there. Really change of artwork. And again, some more, obviously, 1960s artwork. Not, definitely not later. Again, Atomic Knights there. And that's by John Broom and Murphy Anderson. But it's quite a lot of pages. I don't know how many pages in this one. I think it's... Uh, this is one, another one of these really big ones. About 570-odd pages. Of course, Wally Wood. As soon as you turn to a page, you can see the artwork. You know it's Wally Wood. That's a great one. The Hercules one there. Another bit of Wally Wood there. You know, it's, yeah. Actually, by that point, there was a slight change in style. Definitely was a change. You can see certain places. Oh, because it's Lopez and Wallywood. I was thinking some of the artwork looks like Wallywood, and then there's other artwork that didn't really look like Wallywood, which is very odd when you see that. Again, this one, Wallywood again, and that's the Hercules Unbound. I think that collection is available. Is there a collection? Might be a, a colour collection of that. Hercules Unbound again. There you've got another one. Finale. The power and the glory of Hercules Unbound. Though by that time, I don't... Doesn't actually seem to have a listing of the, the artist. That's strange. Okay. And you've got some more stories there. Oh, Tales of the Great Disaster. Some very unusual artwork there. Oh, the Great Disaster. Oh, the Superman and the Atomic Knights. So they bought that. Days of Future Past. I think that sounds a bit like a another title. Oh, let's move that one there. And this one, Batman. Now, this one's an odd one. This is issue volume one. They've just brought out the Silver Age Omnibus. And when I first got the Silver Age Omnibus, I thought it was going to be covering the same period as this. So I was a bit sort of thinking, oh, but of course I looked, investigated, and actually the stories, these ones are 1964. Don't know why they chose to use that. Again, they could have gone for earlier, but they went for there, 1964. Detective Comics, issue 327, and all the way through there, you've got Detective Comics, Detective Comics, Batman, of course. They were mixing them up, all the stories. Batman 171, all the way through to the last one there, you can see Batman 174, and that was into 1965. And great artwork all the way through again. Batman picked up most of these when they came out. I really love picking these ones up. Well, not when they came out. A little bit later. It was a weird thing that there was a great shop that where they had loads of these old DC comics. I don't know where they came from because quite often you go there and there'll be another pile and then there'll be another pile later and you think, very strange. Never could work out the source of that sort of thing. Just, but still, it was just brilliant picking up all these excellent old DC comics. And 
Batman there, obviously the Penguin. And I've also got Volume 2 somewhere. I haven't got Volume 3 yet. Volume 3, I noticed, is quite expensive, so I probably won't be picking up. Again, it's one of those ones that I'll probably pick up, maybe at Comic Mart, if I see it for a couple of quid. But uh, Attack of the Invisible Knights. There, and again, all the way through. Now, they didn't include the dates with the issue. That would have been nice, I always think. I Quite often when I'm looking through these, I think, oh, is this 1965, 66? And you've got a game in this one. And it doesn't include, of course, the short stories that win it. You can see Elongated Man there. And you've got... Uh, their Batman Robin team. <laughs> obviously, got a lot of Robins there. Surprise, a surprise. But sometimes, obviously, you never know what uh, the date was for that issue. So, obviously, other than the month, it says August. Now, I'm just carefully moving that so they don't all piles. And reason I got this one: Green Lantern. This one because it's Volume Five and includes the material that's not weirdly available as yet in Omnibus Edition. Unless it is out. I haven't seen it. I mean, I know there's some other collections where it's, of course, got all the Neil Adams work. Just absolutely superb story. I remember buying them at the time. Love those issues with the Green Lantern and Green Arrow. Neil Adams, superb artist. Absolutely amazing. And let's just see the issues that are included in this one. You can see issue 76, of course, classic one, and 77, 78, all the way through Neil Adams. Uh, there's 227, and also to... 246, Fury of the Fluoronic Man. And that was into 1977. Never again. Just that superb artwork. The Neil Adams work was just brilliant. Loved, loved those stories. Likewise, the X-Men ones, of course, the ones he did for X-Men as well. And the Detective Comics, obviously, the Batman ones as well. Superb. And many others, of course, he did. Just absolutely great. And there are lots and lots of classic stories. But... As they didn't bring out an omnibus edition of all those, I thought I must get volume five of this one. And you can see the back there, 217 to 246. And now they also include this one, Witching Hour. I haven't got that one. Some of the horror ones I haven't bothered buying. I'm not, I've got a few, but there's a bit of a repetitiveness I always find with a lot of the horror ones. So I'm not particularly rapidly sort of trying to get those. I might. But uh, they're quite expensive as well. There's ghosts. I think there's that witch now one. There's also sinister or something of sinister house or something, and also obviously house of mystery, house of secrets, etc. There's also phantom stranger. Those were quite okay. I wouldn't say they're masterpieces, but they're also, of course, the spectre one. Again, another one that's very expensive. I did have that one. I regrettably got rid of some of these. I wish I hadn't. But still, this one's an unusual one. The Trial of the Flash. And I don't understand the way they've done this because it's a set of stories that actually 1983, which is quite unusual because the remit when they brought out the showcase was they were mainly going to stick 1950s, 1960s, all the way up to about 76 because of various reasons. And you can see, obviously, the stories there. But this one... 1983 and all the way up to 1985. You've got The Flash versus The Flash. Again, absolutely superb artwork all the way through Carmen Infantino. Of course, just masterpiece. Always. Very unusual. Now, I picked this up in my local Oxfam shop. I wasn't really sure what it was, actually. When I saw it, I thought, Trials of Flash. I thought, hmm, unusual collection. And, uh, well, I'm glad I bought it. So that's a real good volume there. And... This one's an unusual one. I just got this recently. I haven't read it. Amethyst, Princess of Gem World. Quite an unusual one. It's, quite, it's probably one of the biggest ones I've got. I think it's about 650 odd pages. Lots and lots of... haven't read any of the pages. No idea anything about the story. Didn't read it when it came out. I don't think it was particularly aimed at me to buy, so I didn't buy it. So there you've got there, 298. Obviously, Amethyst, Princess of Gem World, issue one. But I noticed it online for a reason price. I thought, well, just add it to the showcase collection. And, well, to be honest, the artwork looks great. The stories, I'm quite certain, look quite fine. But it's, uh, again, when it came out, I don't know how well or how successful it was. I don't know if the stories are continuing going, to be honest. Absolutely no idea. But there's a lot of material there. You can see various annuals, legions of superheroes. And that's one series that I would... I would like to get the Legion of Superheroes, certainly volume four and volume five, because a lot of those haven't been collected as far as I'm aware, other than obviously in the showcase ones. But Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld, I think that must be the record for the most pages of these collections. I might be wrong. Maybe someone can put in the comments below that 
that there's actually one that's even bigger than that. Which one? Oh, I love these ones. Strange Adventures. But unfortunately, they only went to volume one and two. Gorillas in Space. There's a lots of stories with gorillas. DC Comics during the 50s really loved gorillas for some weird reason. But these ones are 1950, 1955. And of course, a lot of them are like Gil Kane, Carmen Infantino, and many others. Really great artwork all the way through. But 1955, all the way through to... And obviously, got there. There are a lot of stories. So you've got here the amazing reign of gems, the science fiction convention on Mars. You've also got the puzzle from Planet X. Now, they're pretty tame in comparison with, obviously, the EC Comics ones. But still, I generally enjoyed most of the stories. And it's a pity they didn't go to volume four or five because there were many other strange adventure stories. The world destroyed. A world destroyed, I should say. But unfortunately, they never include the artist or writer's name with them. So quite often, obviously, you have to look back at the front to find out more details. It would be nice if they just included just down the bottom. Then you wouldn't have to spend your time looking back, looking back. Because I can't always identify the artist. So I turn around and say, oh, that's... And then find out it's not. Because of the Inca, it's quite different. The Moon Man and the Meteor. I'll give you $5,000 for that Meteor. Pretty reasonable. The Super Athletes from Outer Space. That's a bit of a cheat, isn't it? Now, I mean, we, that would be really... We have lots of aliens come down and they run and they'd win everything, wouldn't they, if they were super fast? They're all like equivalent of Flash or something. I think that would be a bit of... The Watchdogs of the Universe. I don't know what that one is, but these stories are great. I've read all the way through them. Can't remember every single tale. So the man who grew... Oh, that could be a Hulk man, couldn't it? The man who grew wings. I mean, some of these stories probably predate the stories that obviously came later. They're probably the early sort of... Well, of course, Hawkman was around in the golden age. So you've got those. And there's a, there's a volume two. And there it is. Strange Adventures. Our plan to conquer Earth cannot fail. We are invulnerable. Snowman. You can't beat a snowman story. And you've got all these. This one. Around the universe in one billion years. No less. Mind Robbers of Venus. And you've got Gil Kane. Again, lots of great artwork from Gil Kane. I love Gil Kane. Oh, let's have a look. I'm just curious about that. Oh, no. That's strange. Maybe that wasn't... The st oh, it says the story there. Cross the universe. Oh. That's oh, probably because I've gone to... I was thinking, that's strange. That is the first one. The Invisible Invader from Dimension X. You see even more stories. Lots and lots of tales. Carmen Infantino, Gil Kane again. The Incredible Eyes of... I can't make that out. Arthur... Something. I think it's still very, very... Even if I can't read writing sometimes. That sort of weird style of not writing. Script. A switch in time. Obviously a TV was obviously communicating with some alien race, as they do. Again, Gil Kane, that's definitely Gil Kane. You can always tell, tell a Gil Kane bit of artwork there. But again, this is the quality about these books. And again, you can see the faces there. We always did that one with lots and lots of faces to sort of the drama there. And they're fantastic occurrences over all over the earth. Scientists glance out the window. Now, if you'd see that, the purest, whitest metal I've ever seen. I think it would be pretty odd, wouldn't it? So you look out the window and you see a massive ball like that. That would be odd. The weather... War of 1977, no less. Obviously, 1977 was obviously a good number of years before that, after that. Uh, let's have a look. Um, 19, oh, it only got up to 1958. There were, there were a lot more stories after that. Just a pity they never got to print them all. And I suspect we will never see them in omnibus. Hawkman. Now, there is a volume two. This, unfortunately, is only volume one. Volume two is quite expensive. So I probably won't get that one. But you've got the Hawkman stories. And of course, as with lots of these other ones, I think he was in Showcase. Well, let's have a look. No, Brave and the Bold. I knew it was going to be one of them. They put them in Brave and Bold, sometimes Showcase. And you can see there, Brave and Bold ones. And then finally, oh, you've got the Atom, Mystery in Space. Oh, did he get Brave and the Bold, Mystery in Space? Oh, eventually, Hawkman number one. That was 1964. Oh, wow. Brave and the Bold was 1961. I think they're brilliant, just superb artwork. Joku, weirdly, they actually included the credits. Why do some include the credits? Some don't. Most, most of them don't. But um, it's just, Maker's Joku Bert artwork was just absolutely, and certainly in black and white, even better. I think you really like, see that superb quality. Just love it. And the stories are very different as well. The Hawkman, Bought Girl ones, 
Just great. Though I never know why they didn't call a Hawk Woman. Seems odd that they didn't do that. But still, of course, they went for more of their, that type of story. The Cos Cosmotron. <laughs> okay, whatever that was. And Morse Tales there. Again, lots of great artwork all the way through the story. I say, sadly, Volume 2 probably I will never get. I don't know which issue it went up to. Let's have a look. That went up to 1966, issue 11 of Hawkman. And they were still, obviously, sometimes doing these two ones. I always enjoyed those ones. I know that's not a popular thing now. Most people love things, but I quite liked when they did three stories in a comic book. You really got decent value, I think. Nowadays, when you get, like, one story, or actually sort of one story spread over about 45 issues, and then you sometimes had, like, three issues, three stories in one issue, which was always good. OK, it didn't allow for a lot of development of the characters. That's probably an issue, I guess. Young Love. And this was a series of... Now, this was the only one of the romance ones. Pity they, they only did Backlash. I think Backlash is the only one. They did a few war ones, like Weird, uh, weird War Tales. Those sort of ones are obviously GI ones, Combat. And did they do... Oh, they did Army at War, but... This was it for romance ones, which is a pity. Would have been nice if they'd included a few more because there was, of course, other ones, uh, Heartbeat, something Secrets and whatever. There were other ones anyway. Young Love. And this one was from 1963. And there you can see John Romita and, again, great J. Scott Pike. Actually saying that, very, hmm. When you actually see that, you look at it and think, crumbs, it's very, very different from what you normally expect, obviously, with Spider-Man, etc. Just looking... I suppose there is a sort of resemblance. Still, very odd. But obviously the stories are quite often... Well, I, I enjoyed the stories. Actually, they are quite good, but there's obviously a certain repetitiveness. There's going to be sort of woman falls in love with a man who goes off, blah, blah, blah. And the, obviously then someone else comes along that he, she thinks, oh, I'm never going to... There was a loss of that and that, those sort of stories. But still, great artwork, still great little stories. The Veil of Silence, The Private Diary of Mary Robin R.N. The Metropolis. Oh, of course, they always had the hospital stories. Actually, they look really quite slickly done. When you, you look at the hospital stories there, Marvel brought out, obviously, the Linda Carter one, one of my favourite series. But you look at the quality of the artwork there and the way they've done it, it's much nicer, obviously, because they were more of those Linda Carter with more humour sort of style. And, yeah... But of course, there was quite a lot of these ones, these sort of styles of thing. Now, you've got that one there still, some more examples. This is quite, again, another one is quite thick volumes. It's about 550 odd pages of Young Love. And again, that set will probably crush me in a few seconds. World's Finest. Now, there are four volumes of this. I've got volume two and three coming. I've got those on order, so I'm looking forward to those. I quite enjoyed these stories of World's Finest. And it was only Michael Vaughan's going through reviewing World's Finest, and I thought, oh, I remember those, and I thought, I must pick this up again, and yes, they are really genuinely great stories. This one's 19, uh, 1952, wow, I've gone all the way to that, Superman number 76, then, of course, World's Finest 71, that was 1954, and then quite a lot of the stories in 1955, 54, 57, and you can see, obviously, all the different Dick Sprang and the Inca. Well, at least they included it. Sometimes, of course, they didn't always... You'd have, like, no information or something. They didn't know who did it. But the stories you got all there, 1960. All the way through, World's Finest, 111. And again, very odd. Lots of humour. Very strange stories where, obviously, occasionally Superman would turn into Batman or Batman would turn into Superman or Batman saved him from Kryptonite and so on and so on. There's always... A, Lex lose the property. They always had a lot to. Oh, the case of the Mother Goose mystery. London Bridge is falling down. Hang on, that sounds a bit like a. a I wonder where they got that one from. In one adventure together. And of course, the thing is, they never. Poor Robin was also in it as well. Superman and Robin, well, at least they include him there. Your two favourite heroes. Well, it wasn't mine. I must admit, I always enjoyed Green Lantern and Flash, and they quite often would join together. So that was, but of course, in this case, it was Superman. They were the big sellers, weren't they? Superman and Batman and World's Finest Comic. Now, that one really looks like, covers sometimes are very odd. They don't always match sort of in there, the interior pages. But that one looks very old-fashioned cover when you see that one. 
Superman missing, and they did those sort of stories as well. Of course, Lois Lane, I'm certain, trying to, dis- yes, again, discover the identities of. And there's some more there. But there's four volumes of those. And, well, I think that's uh, this one, like I say, Superman 76, and goes all the way through to the world's finest, and six years' worth of classic world's finest. Atom number one, a volume I didn't think I'd ever pick up again. It's been quite expensive for quite a while. Luckily, found a reasonably priced copy. Showcase 34, 35 and 36. And then finally, Atom number one. Now, the issue came out in 1961, just before the Ant-Man. So these are a bit before. I think the stories are actually a lot better than the Ant-Man ones. Ant-Man was great, but these, I think, were better easily. For me, anyway. Really loved it. Of course, the artwork by Gil Kane always makes it. Ray Palmer, Gene Lauren, really great characters. Loved them. They've got Jules Verne's Crystal Ball there. All the way through to page 517. But just consistent artwork. You've got Hawkman, you've got many other characters turning up in this. Dr. Light and many others. Great volume. Absolute. Kronos, the time thief. You've got the Floronic Man. <laughs> Whoever the Floronic Man was. But still... Ivy Town, Great Adventures, and of course, Volume 2, absolutely superb as well. This one, Batman number two. This one, Batman 2, and the stories include all the way from Detective 34, 343, I should say, uh, then 1965, and you can see there, 354, I think there's another page worth of the up. Detective Comics 358. And again, absolutely first rate artwork. And you've got The Elongated Man. Good old Elongated Man. I've also got the showcase of Elongated Man, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I really enjoyed those ones. And you've got <laughs> two Robins for some weird reason there. Again, absolutely really super sharp artwork all the way through. This one, I never saw a menace yet that one Batman couldn't lick. Now there has to be three. They obviously did a few stories like that where they had multiple characters. Uh, you've obviously got giant man, obviously some, oh, you've got a lot of there. The blockbuster breaks loose, the Titanic terror, etc., etc. Look great job. Now, volume two, I've also got volume one. I think volume three, volume four, I probably won't get those. I might do, but I'll probably wait, maybe get the Silver Age ones, the omnibus collections. So, uh, you see there, the list in there, 343 to 358, as well as Batman 175 to 188. And Joker and Riddler and, of course, many others. This one is probably one of the slightly odd ones. Showcase presents, and I really wish they'd continued this series. Showcase makes it slightly hard to find, actually, when you're looking for it. Because showcase presents Showcase. Seems to be a bit of an odd one for the search. But still, Showcase which must probably confuse anyone buying it. But it also features some very odd stories. And the showcase came out originally 1956. And of course, issue four is, of course, the famous one with the Flash. And it includes that as well. But this story goes all the way. It's got Rip Hunter as well. Rip Hunter. You've got Adam Strange. So you've got lots. And some of these, of course, have been done in the other books. There is an Adam Strange one as well, of course, Rip Hunter one. Fireman Farrell. Probably no showcase collection will ever come out, or any omnibus collection will ever come out of Fireman Farrell. I don't know if he ever featured in one of the stories. Oh, Kings of the Wild as well. And you've also got, let's, what's the next one? Again, just brilliant artwork. Very, very super sharp. Actually looks a bit like the sea, uh, sea Devils one. I think it probably is Sea Devils. I think Sea Devils, you've got Challenges of the Unknown, uh, Flash, Man, Man Hunters. You've got Challenges of the Unknown. You got there, Flash again, Lois Lane, Lois Lane. Some of the characters, they often had two or three issues, and then obviously they decided, yes, this is obviously a successful one. We're going to bring out a book. No, it doesn't seem to be including the Sea Devils. I think the Sea Devils must have been a bit later. So you got that there, and also another one. I don't know what that character is. Oh, the Manhunters. Again, probably one that probably didn't turn up ever again. I don't think they did anyway. The Human Eel sounds a bit like a similar character, obviously, in Marvel. But you've got Challenges of the Unknown. Of course, Jack Kirby's brilliant artwork. Many people turn around and say, oh, that's obviously the early version, obviously, the Fantastic Four. I still feel that the Sea Devils was more an accurate one. Obviously, Jack Kirby doing the challenge makes a slight difference, but it's still, I don't know, feels to me, storylines, the other one, more there. But still, The Flash. 
got their showcase for and what one was that? That was number eight. So obviously that was slightly beyond that. Lois Lane, of course, showcase presents what a ungainly looking heading that is. Showcase presents Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. That's a bit of a mouthful. And not only that, then they included the title there, as well as of course the usual blurbs they would put over a lot of these. Again, slightly rough. Some of the covers, again, the artwork inside, really, really sharp. Covers always seem to be, you can see that there, some bits of it missing. Not so why. Different source material. Another, oh, here's another challenge of the unknown, I think. Yes, I'm certain that is the case. Yeah, fire bean. Now let's have a look. Yes, showcase presents challenges of the unknown. Again, always slightly with obviously having showcase, then you add the, obviously the subheading there. And you've got Flash again, and what's this one? Oh, Space Ranger. Another one that probably, I don't know, turned up ever again. So Space Ranger. And any more? Let's just go through to the next one. This one, but oh, is that Adam Strange, of course? The Dozen Dooms of Adam Strange. Great little volume. It's a pity they didn't bring out, obviously, more, because there were lots and lots of stories. Probably things like the James Bond one probably would have been tricky to actually get access to. But still... That would have been nice if they'd done some more volumes. And also Brave and the Bold, another series that, like they had the Viking Prince and those sort of ones, that would have been nice to have seen as a collection as well. Of course, there is a colour collection of those, some of those, but I don't think all of the show, those Brave and the Bolds have been included. A bit like the Strange Adventures, this is Tales of the Unexpected. Great, again. Really, really good stories. Again, volume one. Sadly, no volume two. Would have been really nice. Again, lots of great artists all the way through. Some, it says there, writer unknown of that. You've got Howard Purcell. I can't say I particularly know of him, but Mort Meskin. Good old Mort Meskin. I love his artwork. George Roussos. Uh, you've got Mort Meskin, Mort Meskin. Nick Cardi. So it's a mix of artists. That, doesn't it? The Record of Doom. It's a Blue Blue Monday. And probably many other stories as well. Again, just great artwork. This one is Seven Steps to the Unknown. It's a pity they didn't include the artist's name quite often again with these things. It would have been nice just to be able to look at it. Otherwise, you have to keep going back to the front to see who the artist was. I was bewitched for a day. It actually quite looked, that sort of writing looks like the ACG ones, ACG comics. Uh, beware it, I can read your mind. Incredible, it's a trick, or what's your name? Tello, or can Tello, <laughs> Tello, good old Tello. The Secrets of the Elephant's Tusk. Some of them don't really strike me as science fiction. They're more fantasy ones. The Phantom Mariner. They're not really science fiction when I'm thinking. Some obviously science fiction. But it's a mix, obviously. It's science fantasy. Whatever you want to call it. Again, a cover all of, of just fantasy stories. The fun Four Threads of Doom. And wild stories. Lots and lots of... The Man Who Owned... Oh, The Man Who Owned King Arthur's Sword. The challenge of the legend of King Arthur. It's good. This little man has drawn the little sword from his sheath when all those strong men failed. I know. So you've got there. Now you've got a weird collection there. Tales of the Unexpected. I keep thinking Tales of the Unexpected being the TV series. That's 1 to 20. Um, put that in the bar there. Wonder Woman. Now I probably won't be getting any more volumes of these because of course there's the omnibus collections, the colour ones. But I still like this one. And this one I don't know and I haven't checked whether the issues match the same time but I think it sort of covers the same volume so but I might be wrong on that 118 they are 1960 and you've got those stories and oh who did it Ross Andrew and Mike Esposito I never can say their name but and Robert Canhar and then all the way through there to One Woman number 137 I would love to have seen of course if they brought out all the uh, golden age ones as well I don't think that's ever going to happen but still Absolutely great artwork. And obviously you've got there Wonder Girl as well, Wonder Baby, Wonder Horse, Wonder Cat, Wonder whatever, Wonder Dog. There's probably a load of, even obviously stories, the Skyscraper, Wonder Woman. Many of the stories continued on with a lot of the ones that were in the Golden Age. They had sort of 1950s, or 19, that 1950 period, they got some very weird stories. And obviously clearly that sort of storyline was continuing. Even if the artwork was slightly different and better, I you can still suddenly still see that style there. The Impossible Day, you know, Charles Moulton, obviously not, not actually, but anyway. And the Invaders of the Topsy Turvy Planet. I thought they were great stories. I always like and they are. You obviously got Wonder Baby, was it Wonder Baby? Wonder Top, something like that. 
They did have a lot of those weird stories. Surprise birthday gifts, the Wonder Wonder Queens. Wonder Queen as well. There's <laughs> loads, loads and loads of characters. Wonder Girl, catch her. Oh, yeah, Wonder Top. I was always Wonder Baby for some weird reason. I was called a Wonder Baby. Obviously, Wonder Top, help you, Wonder Woman. There was, I'm certain Wonder Cat was somewhere in there. Or not. Elongated Man. Now, this was £7 from Dave's Comics. One of the best shops in the UK, as far as I'm concerned. I love Dave's Comics. I must go down there this summer. Always great to visit. Just brilliant store. Millions and millions of comic books, old comic books, books like this. And they might even have, of course, some more volumes of Showcase. Who knows? Now, of course, saying it, everyone <laughs> wrote down and buy something. I, I go down, oh, there's all the showcases have all gone. But I genuinely enjoyed these ones. Elongated Man. And these were actually slightly before Reed Richards, The Fantastic Four. And, of course, there was Plastic Man before that. And probably a few other characters that always stretch. Rubber Man, Flexo Man, or something like that. you got Flash, 112. 1960, and you've got 1960, what, uh, 1960, 1960, all the way through, and lots of these detective comics, Flash, and quite a few of them actually featured Flash as well as the Elongated Man. Great little tales. I really enjoyed the Elongated Man stories. I enjoyed it when he was on the uh, TV series as well. I was so over the moon when they put those. I know there was some controversy there. But you've got here the mystery of the Elongated Man. I always thought they were far more inventive than they ever did with Reed Richards. The early stories of Fantastic Four, they were quite inventive. And then after a while, they just forgot. They just had Reed Richards basic not doing much. Whereas here, you had like Elongated Man using his powers in all kinds of weird and wonderful ways. You know, like they would go into a building or something and he would have his head stretch around everything and just check out things. Reed Richards never thought, you know what? I can stretch my neck and go around all the way around and make certain that we're not going to be attacked by Doctor Doom or whoever. Oh, let's just wander in. Those sort of things. You've got Detective Com again, you've got like curls there. I love them. Just brilliant. Very, very inventive storylines all the way through this. And of course, great characters as well. Absolutely brilliant. They're Ralph. Of course, everyone knew, of course, who he was. I mean, initially, of course, you've got him seeing Mast, but after a while, they didn't bother, which is good. Just great artwork and great stories. There, 51. I love Sue. Sue Dibney as well. She was a great character. Absolutely brilliant. So, Neil Adams, Murphy Anderson, Gil Kane, Carmen Infantino, 51 Tales. I mean, that's pretty good. Really great collection. And they are generally good stories. Very good stories. Finally, Yes, finally I've gone through them all. I've actually got a few more on order, so hopefully at some point they'll be coming. <laughs> I could probably do a little additional one where just add on a few more. World Finest and those sort of things. Also, I've got the um, Black Hawk one. I had that before, but that's full of great stories. But they were all from the co uh, quality comics ones. And I think it's a pity that DC didn't bring out loads of books of all that material. Because they, of course, got the material. It would have been great if they'd done, like, say, the Captain Marvel stuff. Obviously, that was Fawcett Comics. But you also had lots of other quality comic ones that they could have brought. Dole Man, Phantom Lady, all those sort of ones. would have been just great if they'd got those out. Anyway, they didn't. So, uh, I don't know what the reason was why I stopped. They suddenly just stopped, and then that was that. And I thought, was it because of lack of sales? Maybe the sales dropped off. I don't know what the reason was. And, uh, but... Anyway, Aquaman. Now, unfortunately, they've never brought out an omnibus collection of Aquaman, which I find so odd, especially since the, with the films and things, you would thought by now we would have had some omnibus editions, but nothing. Likewise, with, of course, with the recent Black Adam film, we had Hawkman and all those sort of characters. I'm surprised, again, yet another character that really hasn't had any real decent collections like that, of the original comics, of course. So you've got here Adventure Comics, number 260, May 1959. Of course, he was appearing before that. There were lots of stories before that. Sadly, they're not collected. Sadly, I don't think they ever will be collected. I hope they are. Now, I think there's a one of those sort of 70 anniversary ones of Aquaman. There might be a few of the stories there. But you've got their Adventures comics all the way through. Many of these were Adventures. Finally, after a bit of mix of Superman's Pal, Detective Comics, and finally, Aquaman number one. And that was in, when was that? 1962. See, probably a bit before this. Obviously, Submariner was around 1939, but Aquaman, there's always that sort of. And you've got Aquaman number six and Too Many Quisps, whatever that is. Anyway, 
517. Of course, you've got Aqua Lad, you've got Actor, Aqua this person, Aqua, and you've got lots of other characters turn up all the way. And also, Ramona Fradden's brilliant artwork. Absolutely wonderful. These stories were really very odd. You can see The Adventures of Aqua Boy. The artwork does really look very 50 star, doesn't it? Got that sort of style of... But it's still great. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant tales. Obviously, there's a bit of a repetitiveness. It's all underwater, undersea ones. But just great little stories. And then, finally, you can see the artwork changing. Style changes then at that point. And that one looks a bit like a Nick Cardi one. I might be completely wrong on that. I'm just guessing... Whenever I look at these ones, I think, ooh, 379. I'm, this is the trouble. You have to look at the front game. Just go 379. Yes, Nick Cardi. I thought so. That just style. You just suddenly see that sort of Nick Cardi style. I love his work. Very, very good. And, of course, lots of octopus and various fishes and <laughs> various marine life turn up. And again, another one that looks very much like a very old-fashioned sort of 1950s style one there. And all the way through to the end. And that is it for all my showcases. I think it's about 25, that sort of number. Lots and lots of different volumes. I still intend to get a few more. I say I've got some on order. Hopefully it'll come soon enough, probably this week. But after that, I think that's about it. I don't think I'm going to... I probably won't get the Rip Hunter one. Don't think I'm going to get some of the others because they're so expensive. The ones like the ghosts, the various... House of Secrets, House of Mystery, I've got covered already in my omnibus collections, so I'm not certain I really want to get those, plus they're expensive. Uh, Ghosts, there's also The Witching Hour. I think that's about it. I don't know what the last one was, the last showcase came out, because they didn't include the number. I think that was a missed opportunity as well. I think they should have, because when you've got Marvel Masterworks, there's like volume 433 or whatever. Here, they didn't do that. They didn't include a number. I don't know why they didn't, obviously they included that, but it would have been nice inside or on the back somewhere. Maybe they could have also included the date range as well. That would have been a nice sort of feature. Date range as well as a reference number. So you could look and think, oh, did I get volume 35 or volume 36 of this collection? So you go and look for that volume. So I love these. I think they're great. Again, not for everyone. You can see how they, they get in quite like bra very brown. They obviously are not, but still, I think it's fine. You can still see perfectly reasonable. They're not falling away from the, the actual covers. Absolutely brilliant artwork, super sharp, great little tails. Okay, they're not in colour. That's the only thing you can say. They're not in colour, and of course they're not massive, but they are the same size as, I haven't checked it, the same size as the original comic. They look like the same size as the original comic. I'm certain that that is the case. Maybe there might be a half a fraction of a... I'm not, I'm not going to compare them. I'm not going to go and quickly go and get a DC comic. And maybe they, they slightly vary. I don't know. But still, great volumes. Really pleased I'm picking up some of these ones again. Say, so the Marvel Essentials, not so much. So many, because there's a few, maybe like Spider-Woman, that hasn't, for some weird reason, is yet to get a collection. There's also a few other ones that I think, why have they done any more of those? Also, Robin, that's just the showcase one, probably is a possible, but I was never a fan of the Robin stories, so I probably won't get that. And that's about it for showcases. Anyway, I hope you found this of interest. Please put in the comments below, which showcases have you got? Which showcases are you looking for? Which showcases would you have loved to have seen? I would really be interested to know other series that you think, why didn't they do that? Oh yeah, Backlash, that's another one, a Western one. They did Jonah Hex. I've got a volume of Jonah Hex, so I probably won't get that one. But they didn't do many Westerns. And also, obviously, the crime ones. There's loads of crime stories, the 50s ones, that they completely, utterly didn't do. So are there a series of ones that you would love to have seen? Or different collections of also, of maybe more obscure stuff? I would have loved to have seen a volume of the one-page stories. DC Comics did lots of those one-page ones where you had sort of like... Just one story, that would be one page. And then it was normally a comedy or a jokey one. Then you could do a 500 page book. You'd have 500 stories in one volume. Would have been brilliant. Maybe the licensing or something, maybe it was an issue, but it would have been nice to be. And also, of course, if they brought out all the adverts. I, I actually loved all the adverts. And also, what was it, Direct Currents, the actual section. 
They could have included those at the back or something. The letters pages, of course, they didn't include those either. But that's always one of those things with those sort of, obviously slightly cheaper ones. I'm really glad they brought these out though. It would have been a real loss if they hadn't because a lot of this material would be just so hard to get. Because a lot of these issues are so expensive to buying the colour comics, especially the showcase, Brave and the Bold, the, the grail issues of some of these uh, characters. Very, very tricky. So really pleased that they actually brought these out. Well, hope you found this of interest. I say, any questions, any thoughts about all these things, please let me know in the comments. Bye.